So first first is a bit of a trigger warning. I'm going to speak about cancer. I'm going to speak about surgery. Um, I will not go into the specifically male procedures that follow the surgery that you shouldn't find out until you have to. Um, but if that's too much for you or you're not in a space to hold that, feel free to go outside and um, better. OK, thank you. Um, and take a space. Uh, two, second beginning, is to say to Yair, that was incredible. Your, your words were incredible. Your reading was incredible. The fact that this was round two um, is also incredible. Not surprising, knowing your parents as I do, um, and your family as we do, but you are distinctively your own brand, brand of marvelous. So thank you for sharing it with us. And of course, to Michael and Michal, you too are a model in so many ways. OK. A sermon with two beginnings. Oh, I guess the second trigger warning is there is some arts and attempts at humor in this talk. Um, they tried while they had me under to do a humorectomy. <laughs> but it failed. So now that I'm 63, I have noticed a change in the world for the worse. I'm not talking about climate change, not talking about politics, that's been awful for a long time. What I'm noticing is that my doctor used to be a fount of optimism and good news. And I don't know what's going on in his personal life to turn that around. But for the last couple years, he is, can we still say this, a Debbie Downer. <laughs> a nattering nabob of negativism, to those of you who remember Vice President Agnew. Two years ago, he told me I had an odd thing growing on my back. That odd thing turned out to be melanoma. If I had been born 50 years earlier, that would have killed me, um, but it hasn't yet. And then, this year I went in for my annual physical, and his script, I, I've, I, we've done this script for 30 years. The script is, your numbers are normal, see you next year. Like, that's his line, and he didn't say that. He said, um, you know, the numbers look funny. Uh, so that's what I've been doing with my summer vacation. What I did on my summer vacation by Bradley Artson. I did that. The Mishnah teaches, Sh'al korchacha ata notzar, v'al korchacha ata nolad, v'al korchacha ata chai, v'al korchacha ata mate. Against your will you were formed, against your will you were born, against your will you live. And against your will, you will die. That's the essence of what it means to be a creature, to be alive. We are all of us living that in various ways at various moments, but, but that is the inescapable reality. And one of the things I love about our rabbis is they were, above all, realists. Years ago, when I was in rabbinical school, I had the pleasure, privilege of being a summer chaplain at Sloan Kettering, which is one of the premier cancer hospitals in the world. And the chaplain there was a Rabbi Pesach Kraus, Allah Shalom, a wonderful tzaddik of a man. And my first day there, he took me into the bedside of a patient, and he walked up to the patient and did something I didn't think you were allowed to do, he said, what has your cancer taught you? I don't think you're supposed to say that. But the amazing thing is, the patient had an answer. Right there in the hospital, in the bed, they could talk about what they were learning from their cancer. And here's the thing, 
there are two kinds of lessons in the world. There are the lessons where you've never thought about it before. It's a completely new insight. You never had it. And, and those we have all the time, and those you can learn once and you're done. You've got it. I, I know that now. Thanks. And then there are the really deep lessons, the lessons about love and struggle and meaning and compassion and being present. And those lessons we learn again and again and again throughout our lives. Same lessons, learn them again. So just to rush to the good news at the end, I had my annual PSA test. It came back funny. I had an MRI that came back with some shadows on it. Um, I went in for a biopsy. That is no fun. Um, and that indicated that I had two growths on my prostate and that they were aggressive, which is a word you don't want to hear in the context of this. Um, so the only option was surgery. Um, the good news is the surgery was three weeks ago. This is my first day out. Um, nice to share with all of you. And thank you. Um, and the, the margins were clear, and so there's no further therapy needed at the moment. They will continue to monitor it. They'll take another blood test with PSA. Um, and so now I am learning more about male anatomical processes. At my age, you learn anatomy by what breaks. <laughs> Those of you who laugh have not paid attention to coming attractions. <laughs> so, so I'm one of the lucky ones. I know that. I know that for a lot of people, that awful time at the doctors where they tell you there's something funny here is the beginning of something much more dire. I know that. And I know that there's people in this room and people listening and people out in the world who are struggling with much more challenging realities. I'm one of the lucky ones. And what I want to do is focus on the lessons I have harvested this time around, because those are exactly the lessons of this season and indeed of being alive. There's a wonderful story told in Masechet Sanhedrin that asks the question, why were Adam and Eve created on the eve of Shabbat? God had a whole week. So why not just, like, if that was the pinnacle of creation, which our ancestors used to think, despite the evidence, um, if, if humanity is the pinnacle of creation, why not start with, you know, put your best product forward like anyone at any store would do? Uh, and, and the answer, one of the answers, the one that I love, is that they were created after everything else so that the feast would be ready for them. Everything had been prepared. There was bounty in the garden. There was a table set. Um, the world was ready for them. And they compare it to a sovereign of flesh and blood, an earthly monarch, who first has the palace built and then hires the staff and then has them cook the meal and then comes up with the guest list, and only then do the guests enter the palace. It's all ready for you. And I am so aware that the world has been prepared for me and you. Long before I thought I would need it, a whole lot of people created a world-class medical center at UCLA. It's astonishing. Everybody there is amazing. And the level of care I got could not be better anywhere in the world. And somebody did that long before I thought prostate cancer would be a reality. 
and walking into that lobby, you see a building full of people, all of whom are completely dependent on those who came before, those who anticipated their needs and said, oh, you're finally here, we're ready for you. And I just want to take a minute to multiply that. You've heard our rabbis quote, rabbis love to quote, Bishvili nivraha olam, for my sake the world was created. That's not ego, that's actual humility. Right? Because what it means is that we, all of us, have the privilege of being supporting staff for everybody else. And then occasionally, they are support staff for us. And to be able to acknowledge how completely miraculous it is that everybody pursues whatever their interests and their passions are, and the result of that is you're finally here. We're ready for you. Come on in. I'm blown away by that. A related lesson. Not only does it take a village, it does take a village, but we are, each of us, that village. Western people like to think of themselves as radically separate and autonomous. It's you and me against the world. And that is a delusion of bad metaphysics. There is no such thing as being that is not becoming, and there is no becoming that is not becoming in relationship to every other becoming. We are co connected in a web to each other, and in fact, we are a manifestation of those others. At no point in your life were you separate from the world. When you were inside your mother, you were absorbing voices and nutrients that linked you to thousands of other people. From the moment you were born, people were caring for you and cleaning you and attending to you, sometimes well, sometimes less well. But at no point, at no point were you, you, separate from all the other becomings that are permanently now part of you and me. So the manifestation of that this time was my sister has a good friend on the East Coast who is a prominent oncology academic and has connections to a lot of other prominent academics. And so she found, uh, she set up a Zoom consult for me with the head of prostate cancer at a major research institution on the East. And, and he was amazing. He said to me, I will find the right surgeon for you in Los Angeles. And then two things happened that were astonishing. One was the minute the talk was over, my wife Ilana and my sister Tracy kicked me out of the room. They said, go sit in the living room. We need to plan this. And they just took over. I am the recipient of the strength of Amazon warriors. And I'm also not in charge. <laughs> As if I ever thought that. But two hours later, the doctor in the East Coast called me to say I found this guy, he's at UCLA, he's world class, he invented the procedures that you're gonna be using, um, and he attends Sinai Temple and he's a member of the Minion you've been leading for 22 years. <laughs> so when I met him, I told him it's only fair because I've been putting him under for 22 years. <laughs> My method may be more invasive than his, actually. <laughs> so, um, we are each of us a collectivity of 
everyone who's touched our lives, of all the people who've loved us, wounded us, cared for us, abandoned us, disappointed us, thrilled us, taught us, we are the living integration of all of them. And our privilege is in turn to be that for the rest of the world, to be that for each other. Third lesson. I am so bathing in love. It has been, I wouldn't say worth it, but pretty darn close. I, I had no idea so many people care. But I have been literally marinating in love from the moment the diagnosis happened. My, my amazing Ilana has been, as she always is with the people she loved, tireless, indefatigable. If any of you have ever tried to say no to her, you know you can do that almost once and you'll never do it again. She has been extraordinary. My, my sister and my sister-in-law, my children, my mother, my niece and nephew, um, my Ziegler students and faculty and administration have been more than an institution. They've been extended family, and it's been so, so affirming. Ziegler alumni all around the world. I've had Misha Beirach said for me on four continents. Um, so I think we've covered the geography. I don't think the penguins have been clued in yet. <laughs> Rabbis here and around the world. And then I want to single out this amazing Ikar community. The clergy, the staff, my fellow congregants, you have been so present so affirming, so caring in all of this, you, you take my breath away. We joined Icar, I don't know, 15 years ago by now. Um, we've never questioned why we're here, but I am a, your biggest booster right now, the recipient of your graciousness and courage and kindness has been extraordinary. Olam chesed yibane, the Psalm 89 says, the world is built on love. I am, you are, and we are together, an extraordinary home for each other. So these lessons that I picked up, we're born into a world that has already been prepared for us. We are part of a village across time and space in our bodies, in our identity, our memories, our values, and we are bathed in love. And all of that cascades in a fountain of timeless gratitude. And out of gratitude, responsibility. I am so grateful and just enunciating the acts of chesed, of loving kindness, renews my gratitude. But here's what you do with gratitude. Hopefully, your gratitude, my gratitude, manifests as quiet, resilient joy. It also manifests as a responsibility to make sure that this village is here for others, too to make sure that others can feel the sense that the world was prepped for them, to make sure that love abundant can lift us up and carry us forward. And finally, to build a world in which such grace is there not only for the privileged few, but for all. We have our work to do this season and through the years, but for now, thank you, thank you, thank you.